OneDrive has long been a core feature of Microsoft 365. However, there have been updates to the features and the interface over time. So let's take a look at how you can make the most out of the current version of OneDrive. Let's start by defining OneDrive. It is a cloud storage service that is ideal for storing personal files and it can make it easier to access files across multiple devices. However, it is not ideal for sharing documents with a large group of people or for storing documents tied to critical business processes. The primary reason for this is that when a user leaves an organization, their Microsoft account is deactivated, leading to the deletion of all of their files in OneDrive. This can result in the loss of important documents and information. Interestingly, Microsoft automatically saves certain types of information to OneDrive. So while we look at some key features, I will point those out so that you can decide if the information should stay in OneDrive or be sent to a shared location such as SharePoint or Teams. To get started, log into the new Microsoft homepage at m365.cloud.microsoft.com. If OneDrive is not pinned as a frequently used app, click on the apps logo and select OneDrive from the core apps list. You have the option to hover over the OneDrive tile and click the three dots to pin it to the sidebar for easy access. The content section of the homepage will change to OneDrive. We can collapse the M365 navigation menu so that we have more space to view information. The home page will display a few tiles at the top with recent interactions, and below we have a list of items that we've worked on recently. On the left side of the content pane, there are filter buttons for Word, Excel, PowerPoint, and PDF. If you click the More button, you will see additional options. On the right side of the screen, there is a search field to filter by file name or person. For example, I'm going to search for a file that Joni shared. Now you don't have the option to customize the home screen. For better organization, go to the left-hand navigation menu and select My Files. Here we can create folders. If this is your first time in OneDrive, there are three default folders, Apps, Attachments, and Microsoft Copilot Chat Files. Additional folders may be created by the system or manually. For instance, the first time you record a Teams meeting, a recording folder is automatically created. To create a new folder or upload files, click the Create or Upload button. In some interfaces, it may be represented by a plus sign. Options include creating folders, uploading files, or generating documents directly within OneDrive. Let's click on Folder to create a folder for the cheat sheets I use in my workflow. Notice that you can choose a color or keep the standard yellow. I find this useful to quickly identify the folders I use most. By default, the folders are in alphabetical order. You can switch between ascending and descending, but you cannot drag and drop them into a custom sort. To get around this, I will add a number before the name. For example, putting a one before templates moves that folder to the top of the list. On the My Files homepage, you will see some basic information. The name of the file or the folder, when it was last modified, who modified it, the file size or item count for a folder, and the sharing status. Private means only you have access, but when you share a file or folder, the status will be updated to shared. Next, let's look at how to add files to a folder. You can upload a document by dragging and dropping it into the content area. A blue dotted line appears to show where the file will go. This is useful when there are multiple folders because it gives a quick visual indication that you have targeted the correct location. Now let's go back to the Create or Upload button, and this time we will create a file directly in OneDrive. Choose Word. In the dialog box, give the file a title and then click Create. For this demonstration, I copied and pasted some standard items that I need to keep track of every time I create a webinar. 
And then I can continue adding additional content and formatting it just like I would any other Word document. Let's close this file. Earlier I said it is not ideal to use OneDrive for sharing files with a large group, but I want to take a moment to explore an example of when I would share a personal file. The template I just created is not part of the required business process, it's just something I do to make things easier. A coworker saw the template and asked if they could have access to it. The sharing process is fairly simple. Click the three dots next to the file and choose Share from the menu. A dialog box will pop up. In the Add a Name field, I will add Nestor. The default permission in my test environment is Edit. If you don't want the person to edit, you can click the drop down to select Can View. This is also where you can restrict downloads. You can add a message in the box and an email will automatically be generated. Or you can click Copy Link and then use that link to create a more detailed message in Outlook or Teams. Before we do that though, click on the gear icon next to the copy link to view link settings. It is possible to change sharing permissions to anyone, meaning that anyone with the link can access the file, even if they don't work for your company. You also have people within your organization, people with existing access, or specific people. Additionally, expiration dates and view edit restrictions can be set here as well. If you made any changes, click Apply. For this example, I will copy the link and send a message to Nestor. Let's go back to the My Files page. We know that we have shared with Nestor because the People icon shows up over the file to let you know there are contents within that have been shared. Additionally, the sharing column is updated from Private to Shared, providing a quick visual indicator. As mentioned earlier, Microsoft automatically saves some information to OneDrive. I want to briefly point out a few common scenarios. When you attach a file to a meeting or you add a file to an Outlook message by choosing Upload to OneDrive and Share as Link, the file will save to the Attachments folder. Additionally, if you add a loop component to an Outlook message, it will be saved in the Attachments folder as well. It's clear when adding the attachment to Outlook that it will go to OneDrive. However, many people would assume that the files for Teams meetings would go to Teams. If any of the files from your meetings are part of a business process or need to be retained long term, you should consider moving them to a shared location. Now let's go back to the home page and take a look at the meetings folder. If a meeting is created in Teams, there will be an option to add an agenda. The loop component that is created to support this agenda will be saved in the Meetings folder. Next, we have Teams chat files. When you are sharing files in chat, many people assume that they are saved somewhere in Teams. This can cause two issues. If you want to delete the file from chat, you won't see the option. I've worked with a lot of people who have spent way too much time searching everywhere in Teams and getting frustrated. The file must be deleted from OneDrive and the change will sync back to Teams. The second issue is when the file is only saved in chat, it can be lost when a person leaves the company. I say this often because I've seen this happen a lot and want to make sure I do my best to save you from this hassle. Now I want to talk about two folders that often cause confusion. That is the recordings and video folders. Both contain video files and it's easy to assume that all of your videos are going to one place. However, that is not the case. As mentioned earlier, all recordings associated with the Teams meeting will go to the recording folder. The thing that you need to be aware of is the video file will go to the OneDrive of the person who clicked the record button. A common misconception is that it will automatically go to the meeting organizer. Also, if you use the record automatically setting, the video goes to the OneDrive of the first person who joins the meeting. The video folder has files that are associated with the ClipChamp projects found in Stream. As a side note, if you record directly from the Stream homepage, the file saves to the homepage in OneDrive. If you want, you can move those files to the video folder to keep all your stream content in one place. 
Now that you know where your files are saved, let's look at an example of how to move one that should be in a shared location. In the attachments folder, there's an onboarding document that I uploaded from my hard drive when creating a meeting. The file should be saved to the company SharePoint site. Begin by clicking the three dots for more options next to the file. From the menu, you can choose the options Move To or Copy To. Selecting Move To removes the file from your OneDrive and places it in the desired location, avoiding version control issues that may arise with duplicates. In the Quick Access section, you can select from Teams or SharePoint sites that you interact with frequently. If you don't see the one you're looking for, click on More Places for the full list. From there, we're going to select our M365 Advisor SharePoint site. Make sure that you check the Keep Sharing with the Same People box to maintain access for those who had permission to the file in its original location. To finish the process, click Move Here, and you'll notice that the Employee Onboarding Guide is going to disappear from the Attachments folder. Now let's spend a little time looking at the other options in the left-hand navigation menu. OneDrive allows you to manage files shared with you or shared by you through the shared menu. Here, files shared by others and those that you've shared are separated into tabs. Periodically reviewing the shared by you tab helps to ensure that you are not sharing files unnecessarily with individuals who no longer need access. To manage file or folder permissions, click the three dots next to an item and then select Manage Access. In the floating dialog box, you can choose to edit the permissions or stop sharing. In this example, Adele no longer needs access to the budget document since she moved to a different team, so I will stop sharing. The next menu item is Favorites. Marking frequently used files as favorites in OneDrive provides quick access to essential documents. For example, files like brand templates or sharing reports can be starred to appear in the favorites section, enabling streamlined navigation. Next, let's look at the recycle bin. OneDrive allows recovery of deleted files within 93 days. So if you mistakenly deleted something, you can restore it to its original location by selecting it in the recycle bin and then clicking the restore button. However, after the 93 day period, files are permanently deleted and cannot be restored. Under the browse files by section, there are multiple ways to search. Selecting people will show you anything shared by a specific user grouped under their name, making it easier to find multiple shared documents. Under Meetings, you will see files associated with upcoming or past meetings. This makes it easy to quickly find documents such as presentation slides. In the Media section, users can find both images and video files uploaded to OneDrive. This provides an organized way to locate visual documents without shifting through unrelated files. And the last item on the left side of the navigation menu is Quick Access. It offers shortcuts to shared locations like SharePoint sites and Teams. This feature facilitates seamless navigation between OneDrive and shared libraries, allowing efficient management of files stored across different platforms. So there you go. Now we've taken a look at what's in OneDrive and how to use it. Drop me a comment below and let me know if you have additional tips or tricks to share. Thank you for watching and I'll see you in the next video.